In today's lesson, I want to go ahead and start creating some shields for our player. And the way I want this to work is every time we you know, get hit by something or run into something, we're going to take a point of damage to our shields. And let's just start off by having our shields have, I don't know, something like 10, uh, 10 points, 10 health, whatever you want to call it, 10 units. Then over time, they also regenerate back up. So if you can manage to just not get hit for, I don't know, maybe two seconds, you get a point back. And for today's lesson, I'm just going to have it come out into the console every time we take a point of damage or regenerate a point of damage. But when we get into the UI, we'll go ahead and put a UI element down here. And if we actually get this video to 100 likes before I get to that, let's go ahead and actually add the UI to the ship itself. So as it's flying around, you can see that little shield above it. There we go. I'm supposed to be adding game vacation to my video. So there we go. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we have this. So when the enemy attacks us, We'll open up that script. Uh, he calls fire laser. So let's go ahead and take a look at the laser script. Uh, so we go ahead, it passes in the position. Uh, we're spawning an explosion right here. There we go. This is probably a good spot to put it. So we're going ahead and checking to see if it has an explosion component. And then we're going ahead and calling I've been hit, passing in a hit position and add force to, or sorry, hit position to the add force as well as the transform. Let's go look at the explosions. Uh, so we've got three methods in here. We have the one for when we collide into stuff. And that just iterates through all the contact points of the collision and calls I've been hit, which just goes ahead and throws some sparks up. And then we also have the add force one. This is called when we get shot by a laser. And if we don't have a rigid body, we're not going to do anything. So just to clean things up, instead of in the laser script calling the I've been hit and passing in the hit position, and then calling add force. I'm just gonna call add force. Let me get rid of these, because I don't need them. And in here, just before the the checking for the rigid body, I'm gonna call the I being hit, and I'll pass in that hit position here. There we go. So there's only one call into here, and there should not be any other calls to I being hit. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that private. And because we've done that, this is a great spot to actually go ahead and start taking our damage now. So we're gonna need to create some sort of component that keeps track of the the, the the shields for our ship. And since we have so many colliders on this ship right now, if remember if we come down to body, each one of these has its own collider. And because of that, we have its own explosion script. It's great if you only have the one collider, then it's much easier to handle. And when we go ahead and implement real 3D models in our game, we'll be able to clean a lot of this up. But the way I want it to work is I want one component, maybe I'll throw it on my player's ship that just takes care of the shields and that's all it does. And we'll do just like with the rigid body. We'll go ahead and inside the explosion component, explode a shield parameter and we'll just go ahead and drag that in. I think right now that'd probably be the easiest way to do it. So let's make that component. And I'll just call it shield. And there's not gonna be a lot to it. I'm gonna create a few serialized fields here. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and have, you know, like you took half a point of damage or a tenth of a point of damage. So all I need to work with here are ints, whole numbers. And I'll start off with max, and I'm just going to call it health. Everyone knows what that means. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it in as 10. And of course, we need a serialized field for our current health. And I'm going to leave that blank and in start. This is where I'm going to assign it to whatever my max health is. This way here, if I change the health in the inspector, when I start my game, it automatically takes the current health and starts it off at whatever the max health is. Whereas if I just put 10 here for my, my current health, that means that I have to change both variables in the inspector. And I just like it this way. Let's change. And I'm also going to need to regenerate and a regen amount. So regenerate is just going to be time. And I'm gonna do, I don't know, two seconds, maybe that's good. And I'm actually, I'm gonna make this float, it's time. Even though I know I want it to be two seconds, you should always use a float with time. Last serialized field I'm gonna need. And this one will be an int. And we'll fix the spelling on rate. And regenerate amount. And that is just gonna be one. And I'm just gonna move this so all my ints are together. So we'll go ahead, create a method for void regenerate. And this is gonna be responsible for increasing our health. I'm gonna say if our current health 
is equal to max health. I'm going to cancel invoke because the way I'm going to work this is I'm just going to uh, invoke it. So invoke, regen, or eight. And make sure you spell it right. And I'm going to call this every regeneration rate. So every two seconds we call this. And I'm going to check to see if, um, to see if I'm at my current max health. If I am, go ahead and just stop checking. But if we're not at our maximum health, then cur health plus equals regeneration amount. Now, since I'm only adding one here, this is fine. Another way to do it would probably be to switch this around to go ahead and add first. Because what if I was adding two and I was at nine? I'd end up at 11. So let's actually go ahead and account for that. So we'll start off by saying if cur health is less than max health, we'll go ahead and increase. But then we're also going to want to check again to see if cur health is greater than max health. And if it is, then we want to go ahead and set current health to equal max health. And this is where we're going to cancel the invoke as well. And there's no point in keep checking. To be honest, I'm probably going to be taking damage fast enough that I never need to actually cancel this invoke. But who knows, I may change my mind later on down the road. All right, so now I need a method to actually take damage. So this has to be public because we have to be able to access it. And I guess we'll just call it take damage. And even though I know I'm only going to take one damage at a time, and we need a return type, I'm still going to allow it to pass in an amount in integer form, which I will just call DMG. And of course, it's an optional parameter, so I'll set it to one. And all I'm going to do is say current health minus equals DMG. Then we need one quick check here to see if we're at zero or lower. So if current health is less than one, then we're going to want to call some sort of destroy method. For now, let's just go ahead and debug that out. We don't have any particles for it or anything like that. So for now, we'll just say, I be dead. Then, of course, every time we actually take damage, we should check to see if we're invoking. You know what? Let's just get rid of the cancel invoke. I know I'm going to be taking enough damage. But I'm probably never actually going to want to be stopping and starting this invoke all the time anyway. Let's just leave it on. Not to mention it could screw with timers because, you know, maybe you reach max health, you turn it off, and you instantly get hit, and it turns it back on again. All right, clean this up a bit. And I think that's all we need for our shields, except for a little bit of debug logging out to the console. So let's go ahead and add that as well. Well, since we have them as serialized fields, we can just watch them in the inspector. So let's go ahead, we'll jump in, make sure there's no errors. I'm going to take the player ship. I'm going to go add the shield component to it. There we go. And when we hit play, it should go to 10. Yep. There we go. So let's go into explosion. So now we need to be able to access that. I'm going to go right above here. So serialize field. And we called it shield. And I'm just going to call it shield as well. And then in, I've been hit even before we spark anything. Oh, no, we'll do it after. We'll go ahead and throw the particle effects up. Then we're going to go ahead and grab shield. Well, we'll have to check to see if it exists. So if shield does not equal null. Quick homework question. How do we shorten that and still check for null? I'll leave that to you. So if we don't have any shields assigned, or sorry, if it doesn't equal null, I always like to do it this way. If it does equal null, return, there's nothing to do after that. So if we go past there, that means we do have shields attached. And that way there, I can go shield dot take damage. And if we take a look here, I have the optional parameter of damage equals one. So I can go ahead and send in some random amount of damage if I want. But because we have it set up for a default value of one, I don't need to put anything in there. But it is kind of nice because maybe your collisions, you want to I don't know, do two damage, three damage, whatever. It's nice just to be able to have that option later on. All right, so I'm going to save that off. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to make sure I grab everything that has a collider on me. I want to make sure it's locked. I'm going to grab the player ship here. And my explosion right there. Oh, no. Dang it. I was supposed to drag that down to shield. That's good. We'll just go ahead and reassign the prefab for the explosion. I really should change that name to explosion prefab as well, but that's fine. 
All right, so we got that. Make sure to unlock it. And then I wanna make sure I select my player. And I'm gonna watch these values down here. I'm actually gonna shrink the rest of these up just so it's a little easier to see. And we'll have to turn our enemy laser back on. I'm gonna make sure everything is on. And we'll watch his health. And away I go. Oh, I already crashed. Oh, I got hit again. And it's not working. Let's go ahead and check out and see what's going on here. I'm getting hit. Apparently I've missed something. When I get shot, it gets called there, it comes up here. The best way to find this is just to do a debug.log. It's early in the morning, I'm probably, I'm probably just missing something simple. Ranking damage, there we go. We don't need to take it, we, we can rake it. And I just wanna quickly check on the shield script for taking damage. Okay, let's jump back in. Let's get shot, see if that fires off. Not being called. And do I have something assigned to my shields? I do have a shield assigned. Oh, you know what it is? The player ship. I do not have the shield assigned here. There we go. Now let's see if that's working. There, we're, now we're taking damage. And we can see it went down. Uh, let's fly around, try to get some regen. One, 1,000, two up. Let's actually put a debug log in the regen. we go and I'm also going to cancel out this one here since we don't need that debug anymore all right let's see if uh, regen's being called there's the regeneration We're at eight seven six five uh, I don't think we're actually regenerating health up I messed something up again. This will teach me to do coding this early in the morning. So if current health is less than max health, current health is going to be increased by regeneration amount. If current health is greater than max health, current health is going to be equal to max. That is right. Ah, uh, up here. It's supposed to be invoke repeating. And here we go. And if we take a look here, not only do we have to pass in the method name, we want the time as in what time do we have our first tick, as well as how often after that first tick do we want to keep going. So I want it to start my first tick at whatever the regen rate is, in this case, two seconds, then every two seconds after that. So I can just use the same variable. There we go. Ah, the joys of debugging. Now, how many of you spotted that before we actually got to it? <laughs> So let's go ahead, we'll start this up, and there we go, I regened. There we go, I regened. Now apparently, whoa! Looks like when it collided with me, every collider passed it in. That actually might be something I want where, you know, if it's, if it's such a big hit that it hits more than one collider, then I can take more than one point of damage. But anyway, we have that scale going. I know I'm gonna be able to fix that once I get down to one collider, or at least when we get to the point where we're looking at compound colliders. So right at this point, I'm not worried about it, but we actually have it working. So like I said at the beginning, if we get this video up to 100 likes before we go ahead and start working on UI, we'll go ahead and attach that UI to the ship itself. 
If not, we'll just use the, the regular one where we show it down here. Either way, I'm probably gonna be doing the one on screen anyway. But until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.